Haste. It's a pretty important skill, especially for energy weapon builds, and when you're putting one together, you generally want to mix in a good amount of haste buffs into that build. But what does it look like when you build entirely for haste? The idea for this build was given to me by one of the members of the channel. The whole point of the build is to pack as much haste onto it as you possibly can. Haste is a very powerful stat for energy weapons, so obviously this is going to be a pretty good build, right? Well, we're going to find out, but first I'm going to go over the build and show you what's on here. The ship I chose for this build is the Eagle Pilot Raider, and the reason I chose this one is entirely because of the fact that it is a pilot ship, which means I'll be able to use reroute reserves to weapons 3 on this. The only other reason I picked the Eagle is because it's currently the only pilot ship I have upgraded to Tier 6 X2. Really, you could do this build on pretty much any pilot ship. Another advantage to using the Eagle, though, is that it's a Raider, so most of its bridge officer seating is going to be universal, providing me a lot more flexibility there. Moving on to the build itself, most of the weapons I'm using on this thing are Viridian Plasma Dual Heavy Cannons. These are here for the theme of the build because the proc on the Viridian Plasma weapons is a 2.5% chance to increase their firing cycle haste by 30% for 6 seconds. The reason I went with Dual Heavy Cannons specifically is because Dual Heavy Cannons also get that extra 10% crit severity buff. But since we're using a specialization firing mode, in this case reroute reserves the weapons, I could actually switch between beams, cannons, or a mixture of both. Also in the weapons, I'm using the Ultimate Plasma set from the Lobi store. I've got the torpedo in the front, the Omni Beam in the back, and the console in one of the Universal slots. The Ultimate set is interesting for a few different reasons, but the main reason we're using it here is for its three-piece bonus, which is a click ability called Starfleet Ultimate Hybrid Arms. Activating will give a 100% firing cycle haste buff to my weapons for 12 seconds. 100%, that is a lot of haste. I couldn't find any core sets that have any influence on haste, so I'm just using my standard energy weapon getup over here. So that's a Colony Deflector, the Competitive Reputation Engine, the Fleet Spire Warp Core, and the Discovery Reputation Shield. For an experimental weapon, there are actually two options you could pick from. The one I'm using here is the Solar Voltaic Array off the Theseus Miracle Worker Destroyer, which has a proc that gives a 10% chance to increase my firing cycle haste by 200% for 4 seconds. The other option is Experimental Feedback Matrix off of the Deimos Pilot Destroyer. Repeated hits with this weapon will grant a 10% firing cycle haste buff to your energy weapons for 10 seconds. The reason I didn't go with this one is because, one, I don't have it upgraded and I didn't feel like wasting the Phoenix upgrades on something I would only use once, but also because it's really not going to be as much firing cycle haste as it sounds like it's going to be, because this thing has a recharge time of 7 seconds. So the haste buff from those repeated hits are only going to overlap once, and it's only going to do so for about 3 seconds. And that's assuming you can even get a second hit off of this thing before you destroy your target with the rest of your weapons. So you're really only going to get any haste out of this thing if you're fighting some really heavy, tanky boss level enemy. For the devices, again, couldn't find anything that buffs haste there, so it's just my usual energy weapon setup. That's Advanced Energy Amplifiers, Deuterium Surplus, Reactive Armor Catalyst, and the Kobayashi Maru Transponder. Now, for the consoles, every single Universal console on here has some sort of buff to Firing Cycle Haste. Well, except the Ultimate Swarm Processor, technically that doesn't buff Haste, but its 3-piece does, so I'm counting that. Several of these consoles you've probably seen me use in other build videos before, but there are a couple on here that you may not have seen before, like this first one. Dominion Targeting Synchronizer off the Gemidar Vanguard Dreadnought. What this does is marks a single foe for 15 seconds. That foe will receive some small debuffs, but at the same time, any member of the team firing on that foe will get a 30% buff to firing cycle haste and minus 30% to their weapons power cost. So it's a little like the console version of Emergency Weapon Cycle. Except the buff is also team-wide, so that's pretty cool. Frankly, this is a pretty good console, and I think the only reason why it isn't more popular is because it doesn't have great passives on it. Crit chance is usually nice, but it's only affecting projectile damage, and this is an energy weapon build, so we're not getting much out of that. And while the Eagle is a pretty squishy ship, being a pilot raider, it's going to need a lot more than plus 10% the maximum shield capacity to overcome that issue. Next is Temporal Trajectory Shifter off of the Narendra Support Cruiser. The way this one works is a little similar to the previous one in that it only works against a single target. But with this, you're basically going to be siphoning firing cycle haste off of your enemy, as well as ability cooldowns and damage resistance rating. So you debuff your enemy and buff yourself. That's usually a pretty good trade-off. Though again, this is another one with really unimpressive passive buffs. Next up is the Domino off the Bajoran Interceptor. This one's pretty obvious. It gives you 25% firing cycle haste for 10 seconds, as well as a bonus damage buff, reduced recharge time on your bridge officer abilities, and reduced recharge on your torpedoes. 
Plus, for every foe you defeat, you increase the duration of this console by two seconds. Sadly, I won't be getting anything out of that phaser damage buff because this is a plasma build. Also on here is the M6 computer off of the Tier 3 Perseus Temporal Escort. The click ability on this thing also gives buffs to firing cycle haste and bonus damage, which is part of the reason why this has often been considered a budget version of the Domino. Next is the flagship tactical computer off of the Endeavor Tactical Star Cruiser. This is another haste buff that will apply to the entire team, but it doesn't need to be targeted on a specific enemy. You can just click it and it'll go. This console is part of the flagship technology set, which was recently unbound from the flagships with the release of the legendary Bortosk. Also part of that set, Timeline Stabilizer off of the Krenum Science Vessel. Activating this will give you a buff to Firing Cycle Haste and reduce the cooldowns of your Bridge Officer abilities and your Captain's abilities, and it'll create a 4km sphere around your ship. Any enemies within that sphere will receive debuffs to Recharge Time, Impulse Speed, and Turn Rate. The buffs you receive with this console will scale with the number of enemies within the sphere, so the more enemies surrounding you while this is active, the more haste you get. The last universal console on here is Mycelium Ambush off the Crossfield Science Spearhead. When you activate this console, it'll teleport you 8 kilometers forward, and then several things will happen. Any foes within 5 kilometers of your destination will receive a debuff to flight speed for 10 seconds. For the next 5 seconds, you'll receive buffs to crit chance, accuracy, and firing cycle haste. That's where this one fits into the theme. At the end of those 5 seconds, you'll launch 3 torpedo salvos, and then be teleported 8 kilometers backwards. Now, truth be told, I actually kind of hate this console. Lining it up is difficult and obnoxious. During its 5 second activation time, you are stuck in that location, so that's 5 seconds where you can't move at all. And it has no beneficial passive buff to this build. The only reason it's here is just to get the chance at the opportunity to use that extra haste. But frankly, I would rather trade this out for something like the DPRM, or anything that'll give me a decent buff to bonus damage or crit severity. And the rest of the consoles are just vulnerability locators from the Fleet Spire. And that's mostly because the Eagle only having two engineering slots, it's a pretty poor candidate for isomags. Now, I should mention that there is some other gear that could also be used to generate haste, but it's all built for other damage types. Like the Trilithium set, that's a phaser set, so obviously I don't want to use that on a plasma set. There's also the three-piece bonus from the Preserver Resonance set, but again, that is a Disruptor set. There's also the Advanced Radiant weapons out of the Iconian Reputation, but those are only Antiproton or Tetrion. So, there is other haste stuff available, it's just you really don't want to mix up your damage types. I mean, I guess you could. Rainbow builds technically are a thing, it's just that they're not very good. Moving on to the skill specializations, these are actually a little different than what I usually do. Shocking, I know. Normally I use Temporal as my secondary to gain access to Entropic Rider, but in this build I am using it as my primary to also gain access to Temporal Crosswiring, which gives me more energy weapon haste every time I activate an ability that deals exotic damage. In the case of this build, that's pretty much just going to be Chemosite. Going with Temporal as the primary also gives me access to Continuity, which can be pretty helpful for survival, and like I said earlier, this is a rather squishy ship. And that's going to be true with pretty much all pilot escorts. None of the other specialization trees offer anything for haste, so I just threw on Strategist as the secondary. Moving on to the traits. There doesn't seem to be a personal trait that has any sort of effect on firing cycle haste. So this is, once again, going to be my usual energy weapon setup. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I will list the traits on the screen for you guys. Same with the space reputation traits. Oh, I should also probably mention this now. Uh, in the parse analysis, you're going to see symbiotic ice on the combat log. Yeah, that's my bad, because earlier in testing this, I was using dual beam banks earlier, but then decided to switch to the dual heavy cannons, but I forgot to take off symbiotic ice. It's not going to make that much difference, Symbiotic Ice only gives like an extra 6% of your beam damage, but for this part I did swap that out for superior cannon training like that should have been. Now let's get into the Starship traits, because this is where all the haste is on this panel. First is Vanguard Specialist off the legendary Jem'Hadar attack ship. Technically this doesn't offer haste, but this is the extension trait for our firing mode, which in this case is reroute reserves to weapons, which does give haste. Emergency Weapon Cycle off of the Arbiter Battlecruiser. Activating Emergency Power to Weapons will give me a buff to Firing Cycle Haste and reduce the power cost of my weapons. Next is Weapons Hot Deflections to Full off the Inquiry, or if you have the Legendary Avenger, you actually have both of these traits. This works a lot like Emergency Weapon Cycle, except it's tied into Emergency Power to Shields. Activating that will give you some Firing Cycle Haste and some Secondary Shields, but with this one, the Firing Cycle Haste buff you get will scale with your Shield Power. Calm Before the Storm off the Cardassian Intel Flight Deck Carrier. After you enter combat, you'll gain a stack of Calm every 2 seconds. Each stack will give you a small buff to damage resistance. Once you get to 10 stacks, for the next 20 seconds you will trade those stacks of Calm for a 33% buff to Firing Cycle Haste. So you won't get it right away, but you will get that haste eventually. And it's worth the wait too, because this one has the highest haste buff of any of the other Starship traits on here. 
Next up is Heart of Soul off the Temporal Warships. With this, anytime I activate a Temporal ability or Attack Pattern Beta, in this case I only have Beta, I get 10% Firing Cycle Haste and 5% Bonus Damage to Phasers for 20 seconds. Now this trait right here is probably why I should have done this on a Romulan character instead of my Fed, because on a Romulan I would have access to Pride of Mulrihan, which is the same Starship trait except it would buff Plasma Damage instead of Phaser. But I didn't do this on my Romulan character because I don't have either of those experimental weapons that I talked about earlier, and both of them are only available on lockbox ships. So I'm going to be missing out on that 5% bonus damage in this case, but at the same time it's only 5%, it's not going to make a huge deal. Next is Terran Machinations off the Mirror Cross field. With this, anytime I activate an Attack Pattern Bridge Officer ability, I gain plus 30% to Exotic Damage for 15 seconds, and whenever I activate a Control ability, I gain plus 10% to Firing Cycle Haste. And as you guys probably know by now, I try to use as many Control abilities as I possibly can in order to trigger unconventional systems. And the last Starship trait on this build is Pilfered Power. This one comes out of the Infinity Lockboxes, but it's not attached to a Starship, so you can get it on the Exchange for pretty cheap. Kind of like Onboard Dilithium Recrystallizer. I always seem to forget about Pilfered Power, and I don't know why, because it's actually a really good budget trait. Anytime you activate one of the listed control abilities, not only will you gain a 20% buff to Firing Cycle Haste, but you'll also siphon off some weapon and auxiliary power from your enemy target. Okay, now let's move on to the Bridge Officer Stations. Now, I'm going to go over this part a little differently than I normally do. I said earlier you could fit this onto pretty much any pilot ship, and while that is mostly true, you want to make sure you have room for certain abilities because several of these are triggering certain traits. So I'm going to start with which bridge officers are absolutely necessary for the build and why they're there and what they tie into. First is reroute reserves to weapons 3, this one should be kind of obvious, because this is a haste build and this gives a ton of haste. Now actually I probably should have brought this up sooner, but there is another firing mode that also gives haste. Exceed Rated Limits, which is the firing mode for the Miracle Worker specialization. That one's also built around haste, but the reason I went with Reroute Reserves instead is because Reroute Reserves 3 gives more than twice the amount of haste that Exceed Rated Limits 3 gives. At least it does these days, ever since the pilot revamp. Exceed Rated Limits also continually hits you with electric damage. So not only is it not as good, but you're also constantly electrocuting yourself and your crew. And that's why I went with a pilot ship instead of a Miracle Worker ship. Sorry for the small detour there, but anyway, back to the bridge officer seating. Attack Pattern Beta is always a useful debuff to have, and this is also tying into Heart of Soul and Terran Machinations. Emergency power to weapons benefit to an energy weapon build should be obvious, but also this is tying into Emergency Weapon Cycle. And Emergency power to shields is tying into weapons hot deflectors to full. Chemocyte Lace Weaponry is usually good to have to add some extra radiation damage to your weapons, but in this case that radiation damage is also triggering Temporal Crossfiring from the Temporal Specialization. Tractor Beam, Scramble Sensors, and Gravity Well are all control abilities, so not only will they be triggering unconventional systems, but they will also be triggering Pilfered Power and Terran Machinations. Clean Getaway is also a control ability, so it's also triggering unconventional systems and Terran Machinations, but it will not trigger Pilfered Power. Heals like Hazard Emitters aren't something I typically use on builds, I usually like to min-max for damage as much as I possibly can, but several of Strategist's effects are triggered by a heal, and since I'm using that as a secondary, I figured this would be a good idea to include. And like I said earlier, pilot ships do tend to be rather squishy, so I thought a heal might be useful. Torpedo spread isn't triggering anything on here, but it is still nice to have for buffing your torpedo. Distributed targeting isn't triggering anything either, but it is nice to have on a single target build like this to kind of spread out your damage a little bit. Also because there really isn't anything else that's useful for tactical seating at the Ensign level. And last we've got Concentrate Firepower, and this is really just here because I had a command seat and I couldn't think of anything else to put here. There really aren't a lot of things that are useful for energy weapon builds in the command seats. Like, Suppression Barrage isn't going to be useful on a single target build, Call Emergency Artillery is kind of slow, and that also deals kinetic damage, so that's really better for a torp build also. I guess there's Overwhelm Emitters, but I still think Concentrate Firepower would still do better. Ideally, I probably should have done this on something with a secondary Intel or Temporal seat, like the Demos. But, like I said, I already had the Eagle upgraded to T6X2, and while I do have the Deimos, I rarely ever fly it, and I really didn't feel like wasting two T6X upgrades on it on a ship that I hardly ever fly. And lastly, for the duty officer seating, again, kind of like with the personal traits, there really weren't any duty officers that have any sort of effect on haste, so this is just my usual DOF setup. I'm using the projectile officers to increase crit chance and crit severity, but because this is a haste-focused build, you could go with the energy weapon officers instead. But, like I said, because there really aren't any duty officers that have any effect on haste, you could go with whatever duty officer setup that works for you. Now let's get a look at a combat log to see how this ship performs, and then we can see what it looks like in action. 
in the latter part of a 9th rule patrol at the elite level, I managed to get this thing at 187k. Which certainly isn't bad, but at the same time, I was a little surprised. I was expecting this to do a bit closer to around 200k. Though with how close this is to 200k, you could chalk that up to simple pilot error, or just poor luck with some of the RNG factors of the build. The Viridian Dual Heavy Cannons did 106k, and the Ultimate Omnibeam coming in at 21k. The Experimental Weapon did 12k on its own, which honestly isn't super great, but it's not terrible either, but remember that the main reason that this is here is for the haste buff that it can give which wouldn't really be reflected on it itself, it would be something that would more influence the other energy weapons in the build. Initially, I was a bit surprised at how little damage Chemosite Lace Weaponry did, doing just under 7k damage per second, but this is still a single target build. Chemosite is generally a bit more effective with multi-target builds like Fire at Will or Scatter Volley. It can also be triggered by the Dark Matter Dissolution effect of the Dark Matter Torpedo, which I'm also not using on this because I am using the Ultimate Torpedo instead because of its set bonuses. Putting the Dark Matter Torpedo onto this build probably would have improved it, but at the same time, I would be sacrificing haste from the three-piece bonus. A lot of the other abilities on here really didn't perform all that well, but at the same time, most of it is all here just for the sake of triggering more haste, all of which really is only going to be reflected in the energy weapons. Okay, now let's get a look at this build in action in a run of Wanted. 
that is my with all due haste build. Like I said earlier, I wasn't that surprised with how well this was doing. I wasn't expecting it to do amazing, which I mean, it, to be fair, it didn't do amazingly well compared to some other energy weapon builds I've done too, but it still did pretty well. And that's because haste is a very powerful skill for energy weapon builds, but at the same time, by focusing entirely on it, I was sacrificing other things I would normally mix into an energy weapon build, like certain bonus damage buffs or buffs to crit chance and crit severity. But at the same time, it was an interesting theme, and it was a fun thing to play around with, and sometimes that's really all you need in a build. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this build down in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe while you're down there, and hit the bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member, or hit the super thanks button, or find the link to the merch store in the video's description. If you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, be sure to use my content creator code STU1701. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me out. That is Epic Creator Code STU1701. Either way, though, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.